Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Maya on Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Hello and welcome to the 58th episode of My on Mondays. Today, in the spirit of Halloween, we have an audio recording of Terror Tales by the Old Sea Hag, performed by Martha Wentworth in 1959. Born in 1889, Wentworth was an American actress who became known as the actress of a hundred voices. Lending her vocal talent to such famous animated films as 101 Dalmatians and The Sword in the Stone, she amassed an extensive career in radio and film productions before her death in 1974. We hope you enjoyed today's spooky tale. Happy Halloween, everyone! to see myself. I knows I'm real and been living longer in time. Yes, I knows it. A cause of a memory of things way back here. <laughs> I tend the lighthouse here. Oh, must have wrecked a hundred ships up to now by making mistakes with my signals. Oh, delightful. Yes, cause I can hear them screaming and wailing when they crack up and go down. Oh, you hear that? It's old Mephisto. He's the crow. Keeps me company here. I calls him Mephisto because he's the devil of a bird. <laughs> There's old Jenny Boggs, the ghost of a dead seaman's wife. She's been haunting my upstairs landing. Ahoy there, Jenny! Gets over to the mainland about once a month to get my victuals. The people there all runs away from me like they was afeard. 
I wouldn't hurt him. I only get violent in my storytelling. I fear my stories. And then I lose control. And I go almost mad. <laughs> mad, mad, mad insane. I got one coming on now. So make it dark. Dark. Dark as pitch. <laughs> That's right. Now. Feel my bony fingers running up and down your spines and behind your ears whilst you're sitting there in the blackness. Hear that whistle out there? That's the terror train, the old spook limited. Tonight it's right on schedule, yes. When the vampires and the specters come out of the graves to haunt you, that wicked old rattler comes a gushing and a churning down across the midnight sky, right out of the storm clouds. It's a heading down the way now, a spitting and a crackling orange and blue flames out of its inky black sides. Its monster red headlight is licking like fire out over the rooftops and into the windows, flashing on the faces. It's looking for a station, a place to stop and pick up the bodies for the next world. Yes. <laughs> you can't get away from it. Feel the throb and the tremble of the big demon locomotive, a churning and a whirring right down towards you. Mm, dragging its ghastly train of pitch black coffin cars over the eerie trestles and moonless crossings that span the dark skies. <laughs> Hear its clammy bell a clanging and a going out there in the night. Taste the sweet smoke of Satan as it gushes out. Trailing over the spirit cars, out o'er the icy caboose, and into the dismal wind. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. Ah! <laughs> Not, nothing. No place to run. No place to hide. It's getting closer closer all the time. Yes, you can see it now a winding and a twisting and a roaring on to the ghostly viaduct that crosses o'er the devil's ravine yonder. Some of the phantom trainmen are working at their ghastly duties. Old ovens, the engineer, he's a leaning into the wind out of his cab. His skull-like face grinning out like a speck and his eyes burning red coals, staring out of the deep black sockets. Oh, he's pressing down on the throttle, building up speed, driving the horrible black monster faster, 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 out of the inky night. His long, bony hands hard down on the train whistle cord. Yes. Oh, listen, listen to the wails and cries of the night demons. He's driving the terror train over. <laughs> yes, next to old ovens, it's Mad Grogan, the clanking fireman. He's a shoveling and a sweating like bloody murder, feeding the hungry inferno of spirit fires in the engine with big shovels full of old skulls and dry bones. He shovels faster. And faster and faster and faster. <laughs> Feeding up all of the licking flames in the engine. Spirit sweat are dripping down his slippery face all the time. Yes, <laughs> and sad jives the dreary brakeman. He's been dead for 400 and some odd years now. He was hanged. Oh, how delightful he is. Hanged. Oh, see him juice up the wheels of the coffin cars by squirting them with ghost blood. Oh, ghost blood, yes. Oh, 
Oh, for thar is Webley, the wild grieving porter. He floats slow and easy down through the train, making up the coffins in the grave compartments. <laughs> oh, look at his wicked face, grieving all the time. He's sad because he's got to whip all the ghosts and specters that are riding on the train. <laughs> Whip him with lashes of fire. And that's not all. <laughs> Webley's the one that puts you aboard and beds you down when the train reaches you. And it's, <laughs> it's coming in fast. It's coming in fast. Hang on to each other now. Tight, tight. It's almost here. It's coming at you. Coming at you right now. Hold on tight. It's stopping for you now. <laughs> I'm watching you all close up through my telescope. I can see you there straining and awaiting for my next terror tale. This is the big warning. If you ain't heard about him yet, watch out. The ghost mice is coming. Yes, they're a coming. The ghost mice from outer space. <laughs> oh, yes, about a thousand year ago, the red demon farmed through the fire ghosts on the flaming planet Thorm. In the far heavens was overrun with the venomous little beasties. They come up out of the bowels of the Thorm. Millions of them clawing and gnawing and are scampering up out of the the caverns and the craters. They started to eat. They ate everything in sight, yes. They ate the scrumpets and the squilligens or the fire ghosts. And they ate up all the diffy brogs and quine flames. They roost amidst the tall molt on the banks of the Putland Goose. They even ate their way into the ashy glom, where the plague gnomes abide. Hey, yes. Oh, and nothing stopped them. Nothing. And nothing could fill them up or satisfy their hunger, cause everything they ate turned into nothing. Oh, 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 terrible. Then one day, old Morblog, the high priest of the flame trolls, and his presidium of waving green canatoles, held a meeting and decided to send the bitter plague of mice down to eat us mortals off the earth. Uh, yes, they lured all the growing herds of ghost mice into big glittering space wagons and blasted them, Spinning out into space, woman down toward the earth, and they've been blasting them off at us for over a thousand years. And this morning, the very first of them horrible, glittery space wagons come a whistling down like a shed caught in the gusty fist of a cyclone, thrashed open on the face of the field where a farmer was a plowing and spewed its nasty cargo all squealing and squeaking out o'er the land. It was delightful, <laughs> yes, yes, exciting, you oh, know. Cause the first thing they did was to eat the farmer, yeah, oh. They ate the farmer, yes. They ran at him and <laughs> ate him up. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. They ate him up vicious-like and left him a-standing there, tooth clean, a skeleton in rags. <laughs> then they ate his mules tied there into the plow, and they foraged on, eating up every little thing as they went, leaving nothing anywhere but quick piles of bones. <laughs> oh, 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 bones, yes. Look, and every line of the wicked space wagons is a-coming in fast now. I can spot them through my telescope. Listen, there's one a-landing out there. Hear it? There's another. Closer this time. And there's another. Out by the village, they're fashioning everywhere. Swooping down into the cities. Flowing into the towns and hamlets. Belching out great waves of the ghosts everywhere. Nasty little things. Soft, squidgy, like little bags of mush with sharp, sore teeth. 
in a long snoot. Oh, yes, yes. You can hear them. They're everywhere about you. They're a gnawing into your kitchens right now. They're coming out of your record players, scampering all over your living rooms. Yes, jump into your airplanes, start up your helicopters, hang on to the chandelier, and get into a submarine. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, 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 I thought I was safe out here. But here comes the fisto Macrow, with two of them riding on his back. Get off of me, you nasty, nasty little thing. <laughs> I'm busy now, Jenny. <laughs> Shh. Bend your ears close now and sit in the dark. You're in for a scary one to send the icy chills a scampering up and down your spines. <laughs> I calls it devil octopus, cause it's the spawn of the devil, right? Out of the deep, yes. <laughs> Ooh, once upon a night in a forest, whilst a woman was a-lowering a bucket into a well, a slimy monster come a-slithering and a-wreathing up out of its lair in the dark water, sliding its long, sucking tentacles out o'er the sides, oozed its big black body a-dripping up o'er the top of the well. Sparking blue flames out of the glowing caverns of its bulging red eyes. Yeah. It snaked out one of its inky wet tentacles tight around the woman. And he lifted her up fast and whipped her a screaming wild down into the well. <laughs> yes, and then he oozed and slithered off through the forest and toward the sea, disappearing for years complete. Till last evening. <laughs> Twas then that I seen him a rising up out of the deep and a heading for the shore. I watched him through my long glass. I seen him for real, a sliding and a oozing through the village yonder. He oozed a slithering up the side of a house in the village. Yes, like a monster's horrible hand, all blue, black, and slimy. Yes, his long, searching fingers and bloated jelly body slimed out of sight down the chimney. <laughs> Oh, I heard the screams and the screeches of the people who was attacking down in the house. Yes, I heard them loud and wild. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful, bad, delightful, horrifying. Yes, yes, whilst Devil Octopus was a slithering back up the chimney to the roof. Word got around, and the whole village become afeard and panic upset, like they was crazy. And whilst people was a running and a trampling on each other to get away, old Devil Octopus went a wreathing and a oozing through the alleys, across the town cemetery, and into the sea, leaving naught but a path of slimy poison where he'd been. Oh. <laughs> Oh, now when the night drizzle started down, he's out again. He's a sliming and a slopping fast back or the fields toward the village. His snaky black tentacles all a-weaving and a-squirming. His horrible big head and monstrous fat body squidges slimy up and down as he moves. Oh, yes, he can't be stopped. Cause he smells the human blood. Oh, yes. <laughs> he pops up without warning. He moves fast, lightning fast. He's out there now, thinking up his wicked plans. 
He'll hew a ghastly path right up to your door. He'll tear you to pieces if he catches you. So nail up your windows tight. Lock up your doors. Stuff up your fireplaces. Because he comes in a slithering like the wind. There! There he is a busting in your door. Oh! Oh! Listen! Listen to me! If you want to be saved, all you men, grab an axe. Keep chopping at him hard. Harder. Harder. Oh. Delightful. Enchanting. Ah! I'm completely satisfied. Oh, I'm terrible out of sorts tonight. God, it's too quiet. You see, I thrives on excitement, and I can't stand it when there ain't none. I am a sitting out here on a big rock fishing. <laughs> well, good catch, though. Oh, but I'm too generous. Each one I gets, I throws it out thar to prove it. He's my pet whale. Been a uh, hanging around all week, and he's starved. I knows when he's up to something, like a shipwreck, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I look through my telescope. Aha! There's a ship rising out of the fog. Yes, it's the Silver Queen. Oh, ain't she a beautiful thing, delightful, trim and steady. Her graceful bows are dipping slow curtsies to the great ground swells that heave drunkenly toward her. Out to the night. Yes, oh, look at the slender curve of her stern, like the stylish bustle of a beautiful lady sauntering snobbishly down a misty boulevard. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of laughter and gay joking going on as the carefree passengers dance to the Lilton strain. The ship's orchestra. Yes, yes. Whilst the graceful craft knifes easy through the fog, a monster shape comes rising up out of the deep, taking form off the starboard bow. Oh, a hundred and ninety long tons of blubber, sinew, and muscle. His little pig eyes glitter like stars, and he splashes soft on the surface, pacing the ship quiet and effortless. Like a gliding submarine stalking a convoy. Yes, oh, uh, yes, a mighty snorting locomotive of the deep. That's right, Trubert. Wait a bit whilst the craft gets into the proper position. Yes, wait until you can hit it direct to midships. He's moving in now. Faster, faster. Going into a ram. Goody, 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 there he goes. Look, he cracked her right down the middle like a Christmas walnut, opening up a great gap in her side. Oh, thar sparks the radio man, sounding out a frantic SOS on the wireless in the radio room. He's wild with panic. Yes, panic is broke loose among the passengers, and they're a-jumping overboard. Hear the screams of the women and children as the sailors try to launch the lifeboats. She's listening so bad. Now that they can't get him off their cranes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes, the ship is sinking. <laughs> sinking. Joining all the clammy crew in Davy Jones' ghastly locker. Screaming and a floundering passengers dotting up the sea everywhere. 
Troubert's amused, taking it all in, calm as a pudding. Don't get any of them passages caught in your teeth, Troubert. <laughs> Look, Troubert, there's fat Mrs. Honeycutt, a gasping and a puffing in the brine. She's got her fist chopped full of money and jewels to save before the ship went down. Oh! She'll make a luscious tidbit to gum on whilst you're looking for more. <laughs> There's the ship's cook, swimming like ladies. Oh, let him go. He cooks good victuals. <laughs> and there's a thin, scrawny fella. You can eat him for bones to chew on. <laughs> there's the first one. Dive in quick, Cuban. They got their guns on you. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Yes, but Troubadour be back. He's too smart for them. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh. I guess I better go in now. It's getting cold and clammy out here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I know, Mephisto. I got to go upstairs to tend my light. I know. Oh, it was an exciting time after all. I feel fine now. Oh. You know, I heard a lot about them Coast Guards. I guess they knows what they're doing, but give me the old fashioned way. Drive a harpoon deep down into the whale. <laughs> oh, but I shouldn't talk that way about poor Trubert. Cause I'd miss him if and he was killed. Oh, we've had a whale of a time together. <laughs> yes, if you're afraid of the dark, fire up your hurricane lamps and put your blue glasses on and you can't tell the difference. <laughs> This here tale's about a giant wasp-like creature that sucks on human blood to keep alive. Oh, yes. I calls it the spooky whir, and it's delightful terrifying. A real vampire of a yarn. <laughs> Once upon a midnight, over a hundred year ago, a haunted scientist created a critter out of a small stinging beastie that he found a-buzzing about in a forest. <laughs> yes, he suckled it on the true juice of the devil's weed and on flagons of human blood he got from the bodies of the new dead he bought from the ghouls in the neighborhood. <laughs> he fed it up good and he fed it up huge and he kept on feeding it more and more juice and more and more blood. The whir growed and thrived on its nasty repast till it was thrice the size of a busting fat pig. Oh, how pretty. <laughs> it growed a scaly green armor on its bulging, blimp long body so it couldn't be killed. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> its long, vicious needle, a jutting out sharp and keen from betwixt the poppin' red eyes in his cannonball head, kept a suckin' and a slurpin' in the blood till there weren't no more. <laughs> and when he couldn't find none, he became raging frantic. <laughs> and in the night, whilst the scientist was asleeping, the word drove his terrible needle swift into the heart of his benefactor and pierced him dead. <laughs> oh, delicious. All full up with blood and monster mad, he splinter smashed out of the side of the house. A buzzing and a humming like a huge demon hornet, he swooshed away into the forest and built himself a nest amidst the tall trees. <laughs> Tis from this horrible nest that he marauds out every night, a seeking to quench his thirst on the blood of humans that can't get away. <laughs> oh, believe me now, for true, I've seen it honest through my long glass. All the ground under his horrid lair is covered with the bones and the awful drained-out bodies of his victims. 
But his greedy thirst can't never be satisfied. He's always out looking for new blood. <laughs> yes, he hides in the eaves of the old buildings. He hides wherever it's dark, and he waits for new prey. <laughs> and whenever a human comes nigh, the dreadful whirr swoops down upon him, clutches him up in his great curved talons, and plunges his needle deep into him and stings him senseless. <laughs> Then he whooshes away with him to his dismal nest, and he stacks him up rigid with the others he stung and brought there. He stacks him all up live and stiff like cordwood, and he drinks from him. <laughs> and he gets thirstier and thirstier, and he won't never stop. Oh, it's terrible, terrible. Uh, what's that noise? What is it? It's him. I can see him plain. He's right outside my window. He's trying to break into my lighthouse. He's a knocking and a whacking on my storm door. He wants my blood, and I ain't got none to spare. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, he's in. The words got in. He crashed in, in through my window. Oh, 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 oh. oh my Oh, Mephisto, oh. pluck his eyes out. Oh. Make him oh. blind. Go on, Mephisto. Oh. Oh. What? Go on, oh. Mephisto. Oh. You got him. Oh, oh. oh no, no, oh. Mephisto. He got away, oh. and he's flying toward oh. the shore. Oh, oh. I, I must go aloft fast and ring my bell. I got to warn everyone on the mainland. The, oh, Oh, the stairs gets me out of breath every time I have to go up, especially fast. Oh, this just takes all the wind. Oh, oh dear. Oh, faster, faster. Oh, goodness. Oh, I must get up there. Oh, I must get there. Oh, oh, here's the bell and here's the cord. Now I'll swing it hard. Ah. Uh, I guess I'd better climb the knots on the heavy rope to make it ring bigger and louder. I'm, I'm do oh dear, oh dear, I'm getting twisted up in the rope and tangled in it. I'm caught, I'm caught. Oh, it's all your fault. I'm ashamed of myself hanging out here in the midair. Oh, the war will get me, I'm sure. Oh, oh no! This here's a tale of jealousy, and what happens when the little green-eyed monster starts to gnaw at your innards? Yes, I calls it slumber nice. <laughs> I'm taking you to a plantation on a private island in the West Indies. <laughs> oh, there's the beach with the long white sands just ahead of you. The tall palms are swaying and are waving to welcome us across the blue evening. <laughs> yes, listen to the natives over there in the little village. They're all relaxing from their day's work in the cane fields. <laughs> 
Oh, there ain't nothing to disturb you here. Not one thing, except in Manuel, the giant zombie of Devil's Cove. <laughs> Look, see the big house over there in the midst of the plantation garden? A party is just coming to a close. Yes, they've been celebrating the engagement of the landowner's beautiful daughter, Matilda, to young Jason Barnes, the handsome overseer of the plantation. <laughs> oh, everyone were happy. Everyone, except in Madame Tulip. Oh, here's Madame Tulip, the beautiful native companion to Matilda. Yes, oh, she weren't taking it so good, cause she wants Jason for herself. <laughs> oh, she ain't as happy over the common wedding as she's been making out. And thar, thar's Madame Tulip now, a going into a room on the far side of the manor. Oh, her pretty face is set hard. She's got a plan, a plan to stop the wedding between Matilda and Jason. A deadly plan, oh, a real deadly plan. Look at her, she's luring the giant zombie Manuel. She's going into a voodoo trance as she moves. Moons into the wind. <laughs> Listen to her now. She sleeps, Manuel, in an upstairs room. She must not wake. Her bed's her tomb. The wailing wind softly weeps. With blood and death, Matilda sleeps. Strike now, Manuel. It is my will. <laughs> oh, yes, Madame Tulip's chanting got across to Big Manuel in his cave out there. And he come in like she knowed he would. <laughs> He's coming into the garden now. His monster big footsteps a slushing and a pounding slow and heavy through the flowers and the shrubs. He's staring straight ahead out of his green glittering eyes. He's crushing a path heavy toward the stairway to Matilda's room. Yes, <laughs> yes, sweet Matilda, innocent Matilda. Oh, look at how she's lying there. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, doomed young thing. <laughs> Listen to her easy breathing. <laughs> she don't know what's before her. She don't know manuals are coming. <laughs> yes, a kittenish wind claws and nibbles at the lacy curtains on the French doors. Slumber nice, Matilda. Dream easy, my darling, cause it might be your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> Manuel's coming up the stair, his feet are slapping cold and solid on each step. There he is on the balcony. Now you can see his huge shadow blocking out the moonlight. Look at him! His starving, thick mouth is slavering purple with a desire for blood. Oh! Oh, how delightful! <laughs> yes! <clears throat> He's walking slow over to the bed, his mammoth hairy hands dangling long and loose out of the torn sleeves of his filthy shirt. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh! He's a coming. He's a staring and a gasping down. Matilda's moving in her sleep. She's waking up. Manuel's big hands reach out toward her. <laughs> oh, now don't worry, cause Jason come in just in time to shoot the zombie and save his beloved. 
Oh, young love is so delightful. Oh, 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 oh. And are you wondering about Madame Tulip? Well, they took her out to a special made guillotine and chopped off her head. <laughs> it rolled into the bucket. And I picked it up and put it in my apron and ran off with it. <laughs> Would you like to see it? Oh, yes, I forgot. I gave it to poor, lonely Jenny Boggs to play with. We're so glad you joined us today. We look forward to bringing you more episodes in the Mondays to come.